Here, John, Daniel. Jamal, I also sent you slides. Oh. No slides allowed here, man. Only two slides. Two slides. Okay, I can put your laptop up. So, code, code is better. Code is better. Or just talk. And we also have a whiteboard there, so people can whiteboard something if uh, they want to make a point that they think is relevant to be whiteboarded. So there is no agenda. That's by design. Okay. Uh, we're just gonna randomly pick topics, and if the, for the filler. Lucas there is setting up the test uh, environment to show the performance numbers that we, that we used. So there's the, uh, raise up the box so they can see it. There's the NAC we used. It's a little device for the performance numbers for both EBPF, uh, sorry, BPF, Flower, and U32. But we're just going to wing it, okay? So who was, John, you want to start? Sure. Okay, here, sure. your, the mic is yours. Well, you want to talk about, uh, it seems like, uh, okay, I got the, who, who do I have, uh, Ronnie, yeah, exactly. or, uh, well, let's, let's start talking about the U32 thing so we can put a closure to that, right, and the U32 versus flower, and please. Yeah, let's talk about U32. <laughs> 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 the, the <laughs> okay, go. The, the, the selection of U32 versus flower, we want to put a closure to Okay, I, I have hardware easy. patches that offload U32 and, and Flower into IXGB. I have them, I, behind that I have patches to do it for our other Intel drivers, i40E, FM10K. They all seem to work. I, I tried to write a magical uh, universal John. layer that translated all things into the hardware. I I've been you. in arguments, uh, not in NetDev, but uh, in a whole bunch of conferences. Uh, Every argument I've been in about that has lasted for years. I don't want to do it again here. It's not UAPI, so if we come up with a universal thing later, we can do it. There's, and um, I don't see any reason we should not push the code now and um, evolve on it later as we get more hardware and, and better understanding of what we're doing. I kind of agree. Okay. Sorry, it's gotten, it's gotten to the point where we're not making any progress whatsoever. Uh, and like you said, it's not Dude, I'll I'll this to this to to the in any way. So it's mm -hmm. not like if we have to renege on this and oh, 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 okay, Dave. Uh, apparently there's no mo mobile microphone doesn't exist okay um, so so as I was saying uh, I think we should move forward with John's patches uh, for, for multiple reasons the first reason is as John stated we've had multiple discussions about funding the grand unified scheme for translating kernel rules and classifiers into what the hardware wants to do and this, it never makes any traction because this just, it's just, the scope is too large. It's impossible to make forward progress. Second of all, uh, there's no user interface exposed by this, uh, meaning there's no application visible user space thing that could be affected by us changing the implementation of this in the future. So there are no, we're not stuck with anything if we put John's stuff in now if we find out that there's something better, a better way to do this later. Third of all, I don't believe that we're going to put this into a lot of drivers, not on the order of hundreds, maybe 10 or 20, maybe less. Um, so if we do change the interfaces, the pain for the drivers is not that huge. It's not a lot of code to change. So I think for now, John's work is pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, to what extent do the chips in question here support the classification rules that you could put into a U32 classifier? Uh, yeah, so so the 10 gig cards, which are IXGB, for Intel at least, are pretty limited in scope. I mean, think they pretty much map to what's in the flower kind of classifier. Like a, like a list of U32? There, there's, there's a list that the that we have to match on in the U32. So okay. we just walk through it. That's the 10 gig stuff. The 40 gig stuff gets quite a bit more interesting because now you start to include all of the header prototypes and things. Some headers that we don't support yet that you might want to match on, in, in, but you don't necessarily want to go and add entire kernel support, right? Because we, we already have VXLAN, we don't need anyway, so you get into that discussion. Um, and then the 100 gig stuff gets kind of the same story. It's even more flexible. Um, and then I think eventually you get to the point where the hardware is programmable as far as the parse graph goes. And you can put whatever you'd like in the hardware. Okay. Generally, we try to make the hardware match Linux, right? Because that makes the most sense. But you know, if you want to match on some, if you if you happen to know there's some U32 filter that you would like to match on, we can add it to the hardware. Okay. Cool. Um, so from, 
can't, can't go too far. I'm, I'm attached by a string. Because unfortunately we have no mobile mic, so I mean, come up front and then you will be here. So I, I think that <coughs> the story John told is pretty, pretty much on the money. Um, so I'm, I'm working with Netronome, and they already have fully programmable hardware. So from that point of view, it's really just a question of not what the hardware can support, but what the firmware supports. So I, I can't say what it will or won't support, but from a hardware point of view, anything. Cool. Uh, OK, so here's what I'm hearing. Because I, I also like the Milanox patches with Flower. They, they're going with the 14 tuples or so that uh, Flower supports. I've already written the Flower ones as well. OK, yeah. so I, I think, in, in other words, if someone can use U32 versus Flower, they should be free to use that. Or? So, so, uh, so, so we were unlucky to submit to ours after John, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. So, so uh, again, uh, we, we um, as John said, like, what we suggested can nicely uh, integrate with what Justin has suggested. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in the hardware API, in the NDO level, you could use U32 or Flower. That we're OK with that. We'll do the Flower. Uh, as for our hardware, you were asking, currently the hardware is more uh, friendly to you to Flower stuff, like um, open floor rules. Okay. But down the road, we have a more flexible hardware API is coming up. That so could support U32 more directly is what you're saying? Um, Something like that? Yes. Okay. Yes, which is more flexible. Um, so it looks like we had these two converging uh, and paths. And yeah, yes, they, they, it converged very nicely. One thing that we did, and maybe we, uh, if we can do a short circuit here, it will save some spins on the mailing list. What we, we also did that you didn't do initially, we were, um, um, the, the NDO API did not include explicitly the TC construct. Uh, because Flower uses the flow dissector, which is a generic infrastructure added by Eric Dumaze a few years ago. Right. So we were um, we were using that in the API level, and for some reason it got a bit of negative feedback, which I don't necessarily understand. Uh, so the wait. So the question to, to you and to you is, uh, how would you would you like to really see the Flower internals to the NDO, or you prefer something like more of um, the flow dissector. Okay. We, we, our pref with, uh, we, we, we like better the flow dissector, but uh, which represent the matching. The problem is the, the flow dissector is a data path. Microphone. <laughs> so, so flow dissector is done in the data path of the kernel on receipt, right? Yes. And yes. it's a generic structure yes. that is handled in software all the time. You don't necessarily want to add arbitrary fields to that because it needs to be fast. I right. think that uh, I thought the question was, do you want to pass the flow dissector object into the NDOs? Yes, that's the question. I, if that's useful for Flower specifically, I then go for is. it. Then, then do it, it. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't make sense for like U32 because it's, yes, it's not I, flexible I was enough. For Flower. Sure. If that's how you want to do it, that's not how I did it. But I'll, I'm glad they changed my code to do it that way. If you think it's better. Okay. I'll take a look at it and make sure okay. it works. Okay. But I think that's fine. Okay. So, so I think good. We made progress. So another point is initially we used the uh, switch dev. And now it's more leaning to an NDO, uh, and, and we're okay with that, uh, especially when for the virtual ca case uh, switch that Lonnie, Ronnie was um, um, talking about. But this is only one use case. Do you have the second use case is SRIOV when you have those representers, and of course a physical switch. So what we were discussing. So let's start with the NDO, and then see how it goes. I to switch dev. I think. For a lot of reasons, we should start with the NDO because right now we have a lot of problems with uh, SRIOV because these those things are invisible to the system. Yes, but we are going. I'm just, to I'm just saying. I'm saying that we should solve that other problem somewhere down the line because it, there's a lot of issues involved with that. Yes, but this is going to be changed. Uh, but if you look on, uh, let's say you look on on, on NDO and on f physical switch, we do one together, okay? So you will start with NDO, and then we'll see how the switch develop looks like. Mm -hmm. Jiri, do you wanna yeah, Jiri, do you have any opinions? <laughs> <laughs> Stick. Uh, so uh, I think that it doesn't really matter if it if we use uh, NDO or SDO. It's just uh, an entry point to driver. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I mean, do you want to revector it through another switch dev op? It doesn't have to be a switch dev op. It has. To, it, it can be NDO. It's not a problem. You just push something. Some flow description down, and that's it. Okay. Some actions, and that, that, that's it. That's it. It's just an entry point. Uh, doesn't really matter, I guess. But I, I, uh, I, I wanted to say I, I agree with the, the approach we are taking now. I guess we are taking now for the 
just to put something there and to see what will happen, essentially. Yeah, because because the al the alternative is that we sit on our hands for two more years. Exactly, we, we already did that two years, so let's the uh, let's uh, get the wheels uh, Turning. rolling. Yeah. Yeah, regarding the the way, um, the, I mean, all basically was telling uh, what what kind of structure we can pass to uh, to be to be. Um, uh, to, to be used to, tr to transform that to, to GTA to convert it to the internal uh, hardware representation. So, um, um, so far what we have a patch is, is for U32. I think it's a way to go. I, I have an internal representation that I think it can represent what Amir has sent, what Johan sent, and it can cover also uh, not only payload matching, but also meta matching and, and uh, uh, payload mangling and actions in a generic way. And it's basically what we are doing in in NF tables in user space. And and I mean <clears throat> during that conf, we I mean we agree on 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 the fact that we all want to offload uh, every every front end, every classifier, everything that we have currently. So um, is it is it possible that I I can send an RFC with a patch that only with internal representation, so we can have a look at it and try to agree on how to. How how to if, if that's it, the right API? So, I mean, try to 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 get the the internal representation infrastructure consolidated so we make sure that all the front ends have have the have what what, what needs to be expressed before starting to add code incrementally. You you mentioned on the mailing list that you have uh, thirty more patches following up, but I mean, I, I will I would like to know how how that structure how internal representation is is grown and how it evolves. Yeah, so, so the other patches are for the other drivers mostly, and then to extend, like if you see that first patch, I just did like some very basic filters. I did like L2 stuff and maybe a few IP addresses, just because I didn't want to bash the mailing list with a bunch of patches that started matching on TTL and, and strange things that we only have a few people doing. But um, I just wanted to show that the interface could support that. Um, the, the other piece that, that I have in the patch series that I, that I think we could probably talk about, probably not here, is it, it's useful if the hardware exposes its capabilities at some level, um, just so that you have some idea of what's going to fail when you when you do this. Um, so we so we can we can do a, like a get parse graph and we can show the parse graph to user space, or we can show the table layout to user space. And how do you plan um, to do that with PC as well? Like, like, what uh, you think about it? Okay, so ca can we leave the capability discovery for a later discussion? I think Pablo is trying to make a valid point. I mean, if with, with regard to like NF tables, you know, I, I'm open to trying to consolidate things, but I, but I also don't want to get stuck in trying to figure out how NF tables and TC are merged together. I think as a, as a kind of case in point, TC and NF filters haven't merged in the software stack for, for years. Um, so I, I'm not quite really sure if it's the driver's job to try and merge the two. I, so I, I'm. I think I. I just won't. I just need to to send that patch. So it, it will be yeah, the easier ways to. So I need to sort out that and and, and push it into the main and list. send it to the main list. But I, I, what I've seen so far is that the representation should should be. It's generic. It, it's kind of. I mean, it's not a specific on a table, but it should be easy to generalize it just a bit to to support all the. I mean, the, the basic the basic things that we do is payload matching, uh, payload mangling. Uh, metadata ma uh, matching and mangling, and what else? Uh, there are also tunneling, but that, those are actions basically. So that can be expressed in a very small syntax tree that, that really, and then just decorated with a specific information about if this is going to TC and you want some, you need some specific information on that. That can be extra thing on top of that generic representation or what? Okay, Pablo just sent the, the patches. Uh, so if I hear you, we we can proceed. So. Questions for both of you, I think. For me, that is. Oh, my phone is doing that. Um, so when I when I saw Ronnie's presentation, he was not showing that uh, I was able to select either hardware or software. It sounded to me like when you install those rules, they'll be installed in software. Uh, right, but could I add, for example, the mark? You are sending the mark to the hardware to tell it to tag a packet with an SKB mark. That mark could also be used in software. Right. It does. I when I get the mark, I multiplex based on it. Yes. I I couldn't tell if it was both in hardware, and what happens when a packet shows up in software. Okay. How and do they know that they don't have to put the mark? That's your question. 
a mark, so I, I sent a rule. They ruled the slide that showed a rule being sent to the hardware, it, and it said offload, I believe. Yes. Did it say offload? But at the same time, you want to use that mark in TC on ingress, yes. in software. You can use How do you say both, as opposed to offload only, which is what the FTB stuff a, does? Need a tri -state. Right. right. You hardware, software, or both, because it needs to be atomic. That, that's what I thought was missing at this point. So both patches must consider this, or, or John's patches, you have to consider that, right? Uh, we want the same if it's up to me as a policy person to say, right, I either want to say this is only in software and I can leave that offload, it's binary right now, it's hardware or software, but I may want to say both, right? And I'm, I'm assuming that if it's in hardware, that is an all-op in software, correct? Like, it, how, do you, how do you structure that? Is you don't add it in the hard software pack. Okay, there, there is a whole list for just software, for hardware and software. Okay, cool. Uh, that's the only other question for you. So your stats, I think Jesse, Brandon, uh, Jesse asked you a question, but I, I just want to clarify because I wasn't sure I understood your answer. The statistics, okay, now someone's gonna make a joke, but, <laughs> okay. Jamal asked about statistics. Right, the statistics on, uh, the drop rule. Right. My understanding is how many how many possible stat if I have a million flows or whatever your capacity is in the hardware, can I have a stat statistic per flow? So yes, you can have a statistic per flow. Right. Up to some up to some few millions. Oh okay. Well, I'll, you answered my question then. So and and when I do a TC when I, when I try to list the, list the filters or the actions associated, I will get stats per flow, yeah. per, as long as I, I tie. All right, cool, that's it. That's the only question I had. No, it's, it's, it wasn't part of this pattern, but it, it had, we have to, to structure how do, you, how do the TC would ask the hardware around the statistics per flow. Uh, right. John, do, 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 do you have it in your... I think you guys have the stats. Or, uh, Depends on the hardware. But... Um, how, how, how did you think to structure yeah. that into the... Like if you use the mic, uh, so, so the question was about statistics and, and how do we do per rule statistics. Um, the, the, the 10 gig cards don't support statistics, so, so they, they didn't have it. But the, um, I understand the 40. But the 40 gig um, has a limited number, yeah. But um, I think you'll, you'll have to just report it back in the, in the list of when you do a query. Has to be back. Right, so I, I do a query and it goes to hardware. Yeah. Uh, maybe sometimes the software caches it at yeah. the point. Yeah, sure. So you don't have to keep polling the, right. kind of the hardware. Yeah. That's fine, as long as it's close to accurate. Mm -hmm. But the 40E has only about five stats. So when I mm -hmm. add a TC drop rule, I typically, it comes magically so, so with do you, stats. So do you want to, do you want to make it implicit or explicit? Like, do, do you want to have the user right. required to put it in or maybe opt out of statistics? Uh, we don't want them to opt out. If I, I, it's implicit. If when I ask for an action, it comes with stats. It comes with stats, okay. Yes. So that sounds okay. But, but that limits, so, so question, I guess you have to repeat it. Mike, uh, okay, I'll repeat yeah, it. I'll repeat it for you. Right? I mean, the problem is, what is the failure case, both for not having resources or having an action you can't take? Okay, so the question is, if you have limited resources, for example, the number of stats being less than the number of flows possible, how do you or deal with that? Or an action you cannot take. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that if we end up doing discovery, assuming initially somebody knows what, that this hardware supports actions. Sure. But, yeah. So that's why you have the hardware flag, the software flag, and the both flag, right? If you have the both flag, then, then the error case is you just put it in software because you can't put it in hardware. If the hardware flag is hardware only, and you can't put it in hardware, you have to air out, right? Because it can't be put there. Right, right, right. My point is that it's a, that flag is now encompassing. It has to have the stack, it has to have that. Sure, sure. So I think that's okay. Well, I, I don't know. Are we saying not? Are we now saying that stats are optional? Or for I think, they have to, I think stats have to be optional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we default to non-optional and then I can turn them off? Yes. But if, if you, because if that's you, how TC stats work today. Yes, but if you look on the bigger picture, as in Ronnie's slides, let's say you want to use it somewhere with OpenVSwitch or some some system that does aging, you have to have stats per flow because yes. otherwise you suck your aging. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, can we close this topic? <laughs> Okay, we, we're going to have patches. I think we'll probably resolve it this week. And John? Sure. Okay, John is the man. All right, any, uh, any other thing you think is important to talk about? In this specific topic? Okay, we don't know what the next agenda item, but I'm going to ask.
Daniel, do you want to talk about anything? Or Alexi, where is Alexi? EBPF stuff, there. The cabal, right there. EBPF, come on. You don't want to say anything? You have to have something to say. All right, uh, who else wants to talk about some other topic? Others, I'm going to start showing performance numbers that I'm going to now. Show some stats. Puff, I don't know if Puff's, I am not sure if Puff counts as stats, okay? But Lucas, you think you can, you can do this? Okay, so Lucas is going to run the proof points. And it, can you run two windows where one you show Puff top? Puff top is good when he runs the test. Can you make sure you run it nonstop? I've learned from the morning uh, presentation that I have to cut things. <laughs> so we have about 20 minutes to go. So uh, maybe this would, is this Puff top? Okay. Uh, experts on Puff, if he's doing something wrong, uh, please speak up. He's going to run it. Which, which one are you running? Which one do you want to run first? Yes. You've done the setup? Okay. All right, so just let, let us know which one you're going to run, and I'll just be the MC for you. To be? Maybe. Just put it in the background. Maybe. So it's, it's okay if you just show the puff top, and then it'll just show you that is set the configuration. Maybe just set it up and then run. Do the setup. And then uh, do a run. And, do a, uh, and then show them the setup and then you can do a run. Can you run it with, net, uh, with packet gen zero so you can hit control C instead of timing it? OK, cool. All right, so this device, call i7. I, it's about $500. It's got 16 uh, gigs of 1600, sorry, 16, two times eight teams, which are uh, 1600 megahertz, um, and an SSD. It's not, it's uh, uh, described as a 3.1 megahertz CPU. We've never hit that. Uh, maybe there's some BIOS options we need to turn off. Which one are you starting with? Okay. Any anybody wants to fill two minutes, three minutes here? John? Or Yuri? Okay, here. I would like to hear how a U thirty two handles VLAN, for example. I want to match on the IP fields, so the VLAN changes the location of the IP field, right? It doesn't handle U thirty two VLAN very well. Why would it not handle VLAN very well? You you got you've got an offset. You've got a type. You can you can match on. Well, the huh? pro the problem is you need a, you need a two way tree coming in, just like the BPF programs that TCP dump uses to match on IP headers. Okay, you, you okay. You see what I'm saying? We can fix it, man. I don't know. Right. I'll, I'll give you a okay. The same thing BPF does. Right. I'll just adjust the header and then we'll fix it. Back. Okay. Cool. It'll be like a new option. Right. No, but our uh, hardware parser doesn't care if the packet has VLAN or not. It can just match on the IP. So what am I supposed to do in the driver? Am I supposed to collapse the tree that you built earlier if I want to match on the IP? Uh, oh, the, the U32 takes a, a where the packet starts from, and it starts at the transport layer. We can find the transport layer in the parser, in the hardware. So the, the way U32 works right now today is it starts its parsing at the transport layer. You mean uh, I, I only support the ingress. Okay, I'll repeat what you say. It's too bad we don't have a mobile mic here. Uh, so I, I'm still... Okay, okay, so so one, one of the challenges... The way U32 works, you have offset length mask value. So you can... At the moment, because we traditionally world is matched at the ether type level after the ether type, so what he calls transport, uh, it allows you to do negative offsets. So you can say, if you go minus 14, you're hitting the source uh, the destination MAC address, yeah. And you can, you can extract the whole header, and the SKB will have some of those details, unless you're running only at ingress, in which you have to go and build them up yourself. Um, are we doing good, Lucas? 
Okay. Uh, oh. Which your choice? So you just show them the environment variable. Alex is he here. He's not here. Okay. We're not going to show the, the forwarding test. Pick one and let's go with it. You may have to restart path because. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, John. Yeah. So uh, I wrote some patches that remove the QDisc lock and move it into a per per QDisc kind of thing. And so there's a flag that each QDisc can set on whether or not it needs the QDisc lock. A lot of the QDiscs don't actually need it. Um, trying to rewrite things like HTTP hierarchical token buckets with a, without a lock is pretty tricky. It's probably better just to write a new QDisc if you need that kind of functionality. Um, the performance I saw was just with that wasn't so great. It was like a million packets per second more, um, which, which maybe is pretty good, but isn't as great as I thought. Um, because you still have the per net dev queue lock there. Um, but you know, we got to start somewhere, so we start there. Then the next, maybe the interesting thing is, is actually I saw better numbers on my benchmarking when I turned off the queue disk bypass. So if you look at P5.0 fast, there's an option to go around the queue disk if there's nothing in it. But what, I actually saw better numbers performance testing if you go through the queue disk because that would end up usually, and, and if you shrink the TX descriptor ring size on the driver, so you're queuing less packets in the driver and actually queuing more in the queue disk. You can actually get the queue disk to start bulking packets out of out of it. You're aggregating. You're aggregating the the device spin lock overhead. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Multiple processes. Is it the issue? This exmit more. Yeah. So it uses the exmit more stuff. Is is what happens. So we because. If you never use that and you have a driver that can keep up with traffic, right? You're doing one SKB at a time. You never get the, the chain to build up. But if you make it go through the QDisk, you slow it down slightly. And if you shrink the descriptor ring si uh, number of descriptors that TX side has, the driver can't handle the amount of SKBs that you're throwing at it. So you end up with a queue in, in the QDisk. If you get that tuning right, you can basically get the QDisk pulling out eight, 16 SKBs out of whack and drive CPU down and drive. Um, um, the, the thing up. The, uh, one other thing I'll, I'll just note really quick before I give it to Jasper is if you, if you get XPS right so that you have um, a CPU, CPU per descriptor ring on the TX side, you can then even drop the lock around the driver because you only have one ring working on, on, on each descriptor ring in the driver and everything's sort of nicely aligned for you. And um, uh, it, uh, so folding tests or just you're setting from? I'm just setting from the side. What, 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 what people don't realize what's really happening is, is actually when we tell the hardware to, to, to transmit, we update the, the tail pointer to the hardware's ring queue, that's the expensive part. And it doesn't show up in perf. So people always blame that, oh, we think there's a security clock happening, but it's actually not. So you get the whole speed up because you all of a sudden when you do bug DQ, we, we are, of course, I'm also sized the lock down to the, to the driver, but that's, that's actually not what's really going on. What's really going on is the that, that it's really expensive to tell the hardware there's packets in, in, in the transmit ring now. So once we start getting that kind of bugging, it's a huge performance benefit. I but wonder the Linux driver, I, I can get 40% more true. <laughs> and, and for the Intel drivers, drivers, they happen to be around 12% more you get performance when, when you do this. Trick. I heard John talk about the trick of decreasing the transmit queue yeah. hardware size. I wonder if we can queue the bike queue, uh, tr like uh, tweak the bike queue limits to automatically adjust to find that sweet spot. I think we need to because you know I can't sit on everyone's systems and right, 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 right. Knob until I get it but right. it would be really cool if we could find an automated way to figure out that. I, I think we need to. That's kind of the next thing to look at. I mean, because you still get the win without it. So I'm kind of debating on whether the patches are worth sending without it because there's still a win. It's just it doesn't look really great until you start to. I think get you. That I think you should still submit the patches. Okay, so. Prelude to the net uh, network performance buff. Yeah. This discussion prelude. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Prelude. Okay, come to Jasper's uh, buff. I, I, I have three different solutions for that. Okay. So All right. Okay, I'll All come, right. to, I'll come to the buff. Relax. Come to the buff, guys. So I'm not the only one who does this. Jasper just did that. So you guys just got a glimpse of what's going to happen there. Show up. Uh, okay. Lucas, if uh, sorry, what, what did you want to do? 
you show yeah, All right, do you want me? Yeah, okay, that's part of top. And what are you gonna run now? Flower. Okay, so flower, Yuri? Okay, go. So you got, yeah, w this is with a single flow, at what point? Single flow? Yeah. Thousand flows, one. Just one, okay, go. Two, 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 two. Actually, I don't mind if you restart it, so it, uh, yeah. But are you sure you're running the flower test? Just re kill the path and restart it again. Hmm? Yeah, well, the mem said there looks like something flower would do. Uh, okay, can I? Give someone else a chance. You, you yeah. okay? Any other topic? Uh, the CLS Act. Do you want to say anything about it? So for for four point five, I think it's Qt. Uh, we have a new Qt disk which is called CLS Act, and um, it's basically uh, similar to uh, Ingress. So CLS Act is for uh, adding classifiers and therefore also actions uh, on an ingress point and an egress point. The egress point that was newly added for that, that hook, um, it sits under uh, devqxmit, um, so every packet will flow through that. And um, at a point before uh, the QDisk is basically selected and before you would run normally a classifier on a classful QDisk, so it's like, a, and, and, and it therefore also runs outside of the log of the QDisk. So I think it's really useful. Um, for example, when you have some virtual device and uh, you don't need to, uh, in, in, and you run things like eBPF, for example, as a, a classifier, uh, then you don't need to have something like, I don't know, like a fake QDisk that is classful just for the fact of adding a, a filter for that or where you can modify your forward packets. So I think it's really useful. Yeah, actually, I'm curious who the hardware guys that are trying to offload, like yourself, John, have you guys looked at this? I know you, you had a different approach on how to bypass the QDisk lock. Yeah, more or less the same. Oh, yeah. Wasn't yeah so, so the, the first approach was to add an uh, extra callback handler to MQ prior, right? And then you passed it through and it's all, it would only be limited to MQ prior, and uh, so here you have, like, uh, it's just, it's more generic. Okay, more generic as in can it? This is more usable than just MQ prior. Okay, so is there a possibility that we can actually integrate this into it once we expose, let's say, QDisks in the hardware? Yeah, yeah, this is actually easier. This is easier to do. So the the, the next gen where you're exposing the queues from the hardware. You can expose. You can use this infrastructure, and you don't have to actually queue anything in software. Cool. How fa out of curiosity, how fast are these operations? When I let's say I just read a stat or I add, how many f flows per second can I add or or, or read? The general rule of thumb is that you can update the entire piece of hardware once per second. Once per second. So, so I can I can add what how how many a thousand eight thousand per per second basically. Oh, that's like the. I'm looking at. Piece of hardware, yeah, but yeah. Right. Like, uh, five hundred thousand per second. Five hundred thousand per second. Yeah, that's five hundred thousand per second. That's very cool, man. Oh, I, I can I should be. I mean, I mean, that's, that's metronome. Yeah, I mean, One minute for how many? Hundred thousand per second. Millions per second. Millions per second. Shit. Yeah, that's that's okay. Really cool. Don't 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 Wow, okay. I've worked with hardware that's really slow. When we got 40,000, everybody was just uh, celebrating. Come on, we did 40,000 through an RPC. Wow. <laughs> no, the hardware tends to be, you know, you got to, be, to do some bit banging, and, you know, you... Remotely, we can get 40,000, for example. Well, okay. 
How's it going? Ready? Okay. Okay, anybody else? I, it's almost like we've covered all the topics. All that's left is how much time do we have? 15 minutes. That's perfect timing. We will make, by the way, our scripts that we used for all of this stuff. Whoever wants to r repeat this test on a different machine, we'll make them available. I, I don't know. We don't, I'm not a GitHub type guy, so I don't have a GitHub. Actually, I think I have a GitHub account. I just never use it. I was forced once that the only way I could submit a patch is through GitHub, so I had an account, never used it since. Um, but we'll make these scripts available, like all the tests we did. It may be useful for people who want to see how you can set up a few thousand rules through multiple multi-try hash tables with U32 because that works already. Right. How's it going? And I hope we can, for the rest of a few days, we can uh, interact and take a look. I'd like to talk to Daniel and Alexi. Well, can you maybe talk about your new type stuff? The what? The IFE action? Okay. He's ready. OK. Yeah. yeah. OK, C can you, before you do that, can you show the rule? Uh, if you can pull up the window, what, what are you setting? OK, this is flower now. So you see how nice flower is? You can actually see it says source underscore IP. And you guys will see the difference as we start to install U32. It's very different. Uh, OK, I guess he's already run a test. <laughs> OK. Uh, Go for it, puff top, and then run a test. So he's just going to run a test with one floor that has a single five tuple or one tuple? One, one tuple. So the easiest, the, the simplest way you can go, it just matches on source IP, OK, and then drops. And you can see the R hash table right away and the mem comps. I told you about this. All right? They're way up the R hash table. I know you can probably replace, it's probably sensible to, to understand this. There's, a single rule in the R hash table, you have to reconstruct every time. But it's clear that you, you know, the classifier is being invoked, the CLS flower, the entry point, FL classify. And then you can see that, uh, unfortunately, there's a few things that are hidden in macros, so Puff is not very good at that. It doesn't quite display the breakdown. I tried to go and change it to, to be uh, functions, but I didn't have time to chase it. So we'll... we'll it doesn't do macros very well. Like if I, for example, our hash tables calls a lot of macros. Is, is there something we can do right now that will show that? Can you hit go to our hash table J hash? In in which one? You have to select. Go to our hash table, and then hit, go to hit A, capital A. Yeah. The compare right? Yes, so this is, the mem comp was the most expensive thing. I, anyway, that code, I'll, let's talk afterwards, but I just wanted to show you that, right? It's possible that that's nothing that can be optimized, maybe. But uh, go back. In any case, what you see that with flower, because you have single rules and you have, uh, the hash does help in terms of how fast you can look up things, but it gets slower and slower as you add more rules, right? And the bottleneck tends to be the hashing. It's, I think it's the hash compare, which you can replace, right? Okay, so can we do another one maybe? Uh, which one are you gonna do next? Okay, I can, I can now talk about that. What, what did you want ask? Oh, okay, uh, cut proxy CPU there, CPU info. Scroll up, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that tells you something. We have memory bandwidth problems there, or what? Anyway, we can talk about that after. Uh, what, which one are you going to run next? U thirty two. U thirty two. Okay, go with the U thirty two. 
What what was the question, Alexi? You asked me something about, about the, the oh the interfe LFB. Yeah. So, cha a little bit of challenges because Dave wanted me to uh, get the ether type allocated first before I push the code, and I've been struggling. You know the. The whole thing was presented through the ITF, so it's a standard, and therefore the only way I can get that IEEE number is through ITF. People are dragging their feet. Sometimes there's good reasons, but it's a large community with a lot of opinions. Didn't we go through the same thing with VXLAN or whatever other UDP encapsulated protocol? Yeah. The standard for the port was specified later, and then we had to add an option to, to select the port number. So yeah. let's try to learn from how that went and... We tried to avoid that. It's right. In the draft it says clearly, this is what we're trying to avoid. There was a mistake when with the VXLAN UDP port, Linux selected one, then ITF decided it's a different one. And then you have all these challenges afterwards, because some guy built an ASIC that uses a different port, blah, 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 blah. I, didn't get, I haven't got very far. I've been given the okay to submit the patch. Sorry. Have you, have you socialized the ether type you want? I mean, there are people in this room who can help agree. Oh, I will love you if you do this to me. <laughs> you know. Uh, offline discussion. Offline discussion. But uh, so that's one option. The other option is there's a couple of reserved ether types that we're going to make defaults and but allow the administrator to change. What we expect is that this kind of setup works only in a sp The administrator owns the whole setup. Let me know when you're ready. So I, they should be able to set what the ether type is. Sorry, uh, Daniel. So th this is the challenge, right? I mean, uh, DJ is whining about how unusable uh, TC is. So now, what do I do? I mean, I'm making more it more unusable because you have you can't you can you have to specify options like that. That's so it's. Yes, but should I make that the default, as opposed to someone wants to override the default? No, it's going to be Netlink. I mean, you can change it only through Netlink. I have no idea how CCFS works. Oh, just kidding. But I never, I never do anything with CCFS. All right. Uh, but anyway, let, let's talk offline. I, I, I'm open to ideas before I submit the patches. When it, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So which one now? U32. U32. Uh, before you do that, can you show what you're installing? Okay, so single rule. <laughs> okay, you, you, you can see how tricky U32 is. The numbers at the top which says FH 800 colon 800. And then they somehow translated into English again, order 2048, which is hex 800. Key hash table 800, bucket zero. That's the thing I was showing on my slide, how you, how you actually identify which rule it is. Each rule has a 32-bit ID, and that's the ID. And at the bottom, it shows you the match, what to match for, at what offset. So this is an IP header. It says match at offset 12, which happens to be source IP. And when it matches, I want you to execute the action to drop. And the bottom, the statistics. That's why I was asking for stats to be on by default, unless I say no. Right, so you see the stats. It says how many were dropped, et cetera, et cetera. OK, go for it. All right, so U32 classifies the hardest hit. Well, can you restart that? Maybe just to. Okay. All right, so if you go into, well, I guess it's NetIF receive. Um, That's great. The classifier is cheaper than the core code. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, you can stop. I think we can move to BPF. And when you install it, the gurus are all here. So if we're screwing something up, they can tell us. Uh, so uh, for BPF, what we ended up using was, I, Daniel, I emailed you. Some, I think you gave me some small C piece of C of code that generates BPF bytecode that I can attach. right? But then I found some guy, so I thought I'd give him some credit that had written this to generate the code. Basically, it's the same half page of C code, right? Um, when you're ready, maybe we need to display that. Right, so the, we, the patch is coming. If not by the end of this conference, by next week sometime I'll, I'll be pushing that act AFE. Right. How big is that flower object that's being memcomped? 
is a big key, right? Yes, 64 bits key, Yuri. 64 bits keys. So we should just do a. <laughs> Maybe a 32 bit compares. Yeah, two U32, or what? Unsigned long compares. I think that's what he's doing. That, yeah. yeah. The long is minimal. Right. Because that's what we do in the flow cache. We just have a loop of U32 compares or whatever. So again, the numbers you see for, for PARF are just a little unreasonable, sorry, for, uh, because you have to regenerate every time the whole flow cache. Whereas the best use case for, uh, for uh, Flower is, you know, the cache has already been built for you. It's cheap, right? So it's gonna be extremely fast in the general case. And as long as, so you're missing a few keys right now, like VLAN IDs or MPLS labels. Those should be trivial to add. Ready? Almost. Okay. <coughs> so he's typing all these things by hand, so. So that's, that's the other question, is that if we were to do this, uh, but I have a question for you. So this is a discussion I was having with Thomas at one break. One of the challenges we're facing with BPF is people are say, I think Daniel, you said that as well once I had, I have a, they don't want to turn on the BPF system call, right? For, they turn off totally, they disable the BPF system call. There's some paranoid people who do that. So, <laughs> it's different, it's different. What, what I mean is, is it possible I, to sign uh, the little programs that I pushed through BPF system call and have them verified? Just the, the same, same concept reason, as modules. The same reason we sign modules. Right. I think that will we'll, we'll, we'll make my problem go away to use it, it BPF. People. Yes, okay. Let in your case, what, you, what scenario are you facing some uh, security people who are unhappy about this, I think? Yes, uh, you know, they're, they're a little, ooh, but you've you got you to listen to them. Jamal, Jamal, we just tell these people if you want this powerful framework we're working on that does uh, arbitrarily programmable networking switches, then they, they can't use it unless they turn it <laughs> Think about what I said. All right, so there's your BPF. Uh, yeah, that's the guy. He wrote this program called PCAPC. He made it available on the internet. So you just run that, and it generates the ob object code for you. And so the way Lucas runs it is he dumps that, and then he patch cuts and pastes that. All right? So now we're going to write. Can you, I don't know if you can tell from just looking at the opcodes there if that's an optimal program or not. <laughs> but <laughs> but so, again, from a usability perspective, there you go. You can see the difference in usability, flower, U32. Okay, go, uh, go, go for it. Yeah. Have you tested it? Or? You can start it and then we'll start path after. That way we don't have, you've started it? All right, there you go. You wanted to know what was hitting? They want, oh, BFJIT, did you compile it? Oh, yeah, okay, good, good, good. Just turn off, yeah. See, I, I knew they were gonna catch something. But yeah, we did run both BFJIT and without, and those numbers you saw, eventually we decided BIF with just-in-time compiler was always faster, so we stopped testing without just-in-time. So the numbers I was showing are with just-in-time compilers. U32 was still faster. So this is a challenge for you, my friend. So I'm here for the rest of the week. We have that set up. Try to beat you 32. Alex is just giving me this look. Uh, it's a challenge for you, man. Uh, U32 is faster, that's all. So with the JIT, can you show them that you're actually doing JIT? How do you know it's off? Because you just have a, an address that's unresolvable to a symbol at the top. Okay, can you demonstrate that you're doing beef JIT setup? Well, just request it and display it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 
Sorry, where is it? Okay, there it is. Uh, is that is there anything other one you want? Okay, so you have to delete and add it again. Yeah, because it's already this okay. made a decision to All right, so it do that, please. All right, so anyway, the, I'm hoping that we can, if there's something we can do that will make it. Look, so I should, I should make a point that with eBPF, I expect those numbers I showed would be very different, right? Because you can build your own classification. Ah, there you go. That's a lot better. Yeah. So another thing that uh, Daniel did, like you see this 9% spent by TCF GAC, so that's what, how's it called, DM, DM, from TCF, the DA, DA mode, so it's yeah. in DA mode. This so we're willing, to try, we're willing to try that this week, well, let's, let's give it a shot and see if it, uh, the numbers get better. Sure. But I have to say I'm impressed by the numbers, I was, I thought uh, you were not going to hit those kind of numbers, but it, kudos. Yeah. Another thing that is wrong, uh, you don't know what it is, but this more, more positive process and how process they should be there. It means that you're passing the, like, it's the length, it's, it's like, you shouldn't see this stuff because it's just supposed to do the load from the data, and when it's hitting the cycle function, the slow pass, meaning that it's actually trying to access beyond the fighting line. Okay, so so the opcode that was generated may not be the most optimum. Like when it when it jits, it just evolves and tries to do the single load. The only thing it does after jits is that scroll down to highlight SK load word positive. Yeah, yeah, go down. De no, one up, two, SK underscore load. That one, one up. Yeah, there. Yeah, leave it there. Oh. Right. Okay, okay, so we, we can take this offline. Uh, this is the kind of ho feedback I was hoping to get, right? So the JIT, so the numbers we showed to the, in today's presentation towards the end, those are with BPF JIT as configured just now. Without BPF JIT, they were lower, right? So the, the obvious low hanging fruit is this uh, direct load? Okay, that, that we can try. We can try. I don't think it should take more than 30 minutes to. Huh? I, I don't know about. So. You, you, you need to generate the opcode for it and all that. But so the thing is this, is uh, 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 we did not see much of a difference between the action doing the drop or IP received doing the drop. That's why I did not see, I did not think it was going to be a huge pain. Huh? OK, we got five minutes. Yeah. Okay, l l let's try it sometime. The, we have the machine and we can... And if you have something that we can use for eBPF to replace U32 as a lookup algorithm for when we have 64,000 rules, for example. So do you have a program we can run? Because we'll, we'll publish those results. If you okay, so we can just directly use that and it should work. Okay, if you say so. Thomas has a question. You have to oh, use the mic, or I, I have to repeat your question. Yeah, maybe you can. It's it's a very small like. Okay. Can we have a, a more realistic classification example for the benchmark more than just a simple source IP match? Yeah. So. It's not very realistic, right? Most people. No, no, it's not. But it's the simplest. The paper, right? So it's. It's in the paper, right? We have 64,000 flows matching on five tuples. I think that's more realistic than a single one that matches on one tuple. So you're not using this specific example? No, this one is very easy. That's why I was showing it, because I even this, we see distinctions. I, right? I think even though this is unrealistic, uh, yeah. it would be kind of cool if we put this framework, these examples you're coming up with in under kernel testing. Oh, cool. That, Lucas, you finally uh, get to be famous, my friend. <laughs> I, I so yeah, I mean, because because we are have a dearth of uh, automated networking tests under there, and if we had something cool. like this that's practical, it would yeah, be really yeah, cool. Yeah, I think Daniel has been trying to get uh, tests for TC in general. So. And and uh, actually, BPF is the lone uh, example of uh, that we have extensive testing. Very on, cool. Very yeah, cool. So, anyways. all right, all right. Anybody else? With that, I'm going to say thank you for coming.